and welcome to a tour of my Arabo Roar of the World EDH deck. This deck started out as the 2017 Feline Ferocity Preconstructed Commander deck. I had already been thinking about creating a cat tribal deck, so when this deck came out, I was thrilled that most of the work had already been done for me, and I picked it up right away. I'll be including a link to my deck list in this video's description. I did a comparison to the original deck list, and as it stands, it looks like there's 36 different cards between my deck and the original pre-con, so just over 30% of the cards have been replaced. I think you'll find that most of the creatures are still the same, because I wanted to maintain this as a cat deck, and I wanted to keep the equipment theme in it as well. I think there's still a lot of similarities there, even though I've traded out some of the equipments. So I'll be going through the deck and reading each card, and then maybe explaining a little bit more about the strategy as we go. But the broad strokes, as I have mentioned, is that it is a cat's tribal deck with an equipment sub-theme, or cats and hats, as we sometimes call it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Our first creature is, of course, Arabo, Roar of the World, 3, green-white, for a 5-5, five, five. legendary creature, cat avatar, eminence, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if Arabo, Roar of the World, is in the command zone or on the battlefield, another target cat you control gets plus three plus three until end of turn. Whenever another cat you control attacks, you may pay one green-white. If you do, it gains trample and gets plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is its power. So I really like having Arabo as the commander of this deck. There are a couple more options that we'll see as we go through the creatures, but I think the Eminence trigger is very powerful, especially if you can get a cat out early. Even if it's small, the plus three plus three is still a significant increase to its power and toughness, and it happens every turn, so at least one of your creatures can be pretty big on the attack. And then having a Rabo further double their power is just really strong. A Rabo only cares about other cats, so he kind of demands to be in a cat centric deck. And you'll see I have replaced the original Arabo with the secret layer version. That was a change that I resisted for quite a while. The first, wow, five years with this deck, I stuck with the OG Arabo, but the kitten version got me in the end. So, anyway, so let's get started. I'll begin by going through all the other creatures in the deck, starting with the cats. So first up, we have Oreskos Explorer, 1 white for a 2-2, two, two. creature, cat, scout. When Oreskos Explorer enters the battlefield, search your library for up to X planes cards, 
where X is the number of players who control more lands than you. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So just a 2-2 cat for two, with the added benefit of finding some land for you. Kasali Slingers, 4 green for a 3-5, creature, cat warrior, reach. Whenever Kasali Slingers or another cat enters the battlefield under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. All things will crumble, whether by time or by force. So a really useful card here, and also a good test of your ability to remember triggers. So is Arabo. Kasali Pride Mage. Two white for a 2-2. Two -two. Creature, Cat Wizard. Exalted. One. Sacrifice Kasali Pride Mage. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. An elder in one pride. Of the sigiled cast in another. Another useful cat with a job. And this is a card that's been in the deck since the beginning, but just got a cosmetic update from Double Masters. Alms Collector, 3 white for a 3-4, creature, cat, cleric, flash. If an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that player each draw a card. There is no justice when some profit and others go without. Fleece Mane Lion, Green White for a 3-3, three, three. Creature Cat, 3 Green White Monstrosity 1. As long as Fleece Mane Lion is monstrous, it has hexproof and indestructible. So just a good above rate cat, and your opponents definitely want to deal with this before it can become monstrous. Teamer Sabertooth. Two, green, green, for a four, three, creature, cat. One, green. You may return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, Teamer Sabertooth gains indestructible until end of turn. Kind of a glorified house cat, don't you think? Cool tattoos, though. Crocodile Jackson. Legendary Cowboy. This is another card that's been in the deck since the beginning, but just got a recent cosmetic update. If you're curious, I have a video where I opened the entire secret layer that this came from, which I will link to from this video. Jareth Leonin Titan 3 white 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 for a 4-7 legendary creature cat giant. Whenever Jareth Leonin Titan blocks, it gets plus seven, plus seven until end of turn. White. Jareth gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Light's champion in the stronghold of darkness. This is where cards like Oresco's Explorer come in handy 
when trying to get up to that three white mana on time. Phantom Nishoba, 5 green-white for a 0-0 zero, zero. creature, cat, beast, spirit, trample. Phantom Nishoba enters the battlefield with 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Whenever Phantom Nishoba deals damage, you gain that much life. If damage would be dealt to Phantom Nishoba, Prevent that damage. Remove a plus one plus one counter from Phantom Nishoba. So here is one of the alternate commanders for this deck. Miri, Weatherlight Duelist. One green, white, for a 3-2 legendary creature, cat warrior. First strike. Whenever Miri Weatherlight Duelist attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat. As long as Miri Weatherlight Duelist is tapped, no more than one creature can attack you each combat. Spirit of the Hearth. 4 white white for a 4 5 creature cat spirit. Flying, you have hexproof. Thieves know that a snarl in the night means rob another house. Jedit Ojanan of Afrava. Three, green, green, green. For a five, five, legendary creature, cat, warrior. Forest walk. Whenever Jedit Ojanan of Afrava attacks or blocks, create a two, two, green, cat, warrior, creature token with forest walk. The cat warriors recognize this Jedit's face, but not his fierce loyalty to Afrava. So this guy definitely likes to rumble. He's a super valuable way to keep attacking, to keep getting value from Arabo, and keep creating those tokens that also have forest walk. Yeah, really good card. Kemba, Ka Regent. One, white, white. For a 2 4. Legendary creature, Cat Cleric. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 2 2 white cat creature token for each equipment attached to Kemba, Ka Regent. I am not Raksha. I never will be. But I refuse to be the Ka who watched her pride be torn asunder. So this is an excellent creature to stack a ton of equipment on and keep generating 2-2 two -two tokens each upkeep. Oops. Balan, Wandering Knight. 2, White, White. For a 3-3, three, three, legendary creature, cat, knight. First strike. Balan, wandering knight, has double strike, as long as two or more equipment are attached to it. One, white. Attach all equipment you control to Balan. What weapon will you bear against one who's mastered them all? So he's really good at vacuuming up any equipment that gets dropped by creatures who have died, or if you've just deployed a lot of equipment. He's a very inexpensive way to get around 
equip costs. It also can equip itself at instant speed. The one downside, I guess, is that he takes all the equipment, so if you want to spread it around to multiple creatures, you'll still have to pay that equip cost, but for just two mana, being able to equip all of your equipment at once is really good. So this is the other potential commander for this deck, and he's definitely more for if you cared less about cats and more about equipment. Nazan, Revered Bladesmith. Four, green-white, for a 5-4, legendary creature, cat, artificer. When Nazan, Revered Bladesmith, enters the battlefield, Search your library for an equipment card and reveal it. If you reveal a card named Hammer of Nizan this way, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, you may tap target creature defending player controls. Raksha, Golden Cub, 5, White, White, for a 3-4, Legendary Creature, Cat, Soldier, Vigilance. As long as Raksha, Golden Cub, is equipped, Cat Creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and have Double Strike. Some believe that Raksha, youngest of the Ka, is the reincarnation of Dokkan, the first and mightiest of Leonin leaders. So this one is an excellent one to pair with Arabo as well, um, getting the extra power and toughness from both creatures, and then compounding it with double strike is super good, and if you can get in Arabo's second ability on top of that, then your creatures can end up extremely large. Jazal, Goldmane. Two, white, white, for a 4-4. Four, four. Legendary creature, cat, warrior. First strike. Three, white, white. Attacking creatures you control. Get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of attacking creatures. As my Ka, he is the source of my inspiration. As my brother, he is the embodiment of my aspirations. Ajani, Goldmane. Another creature that's here to increase power and toughness. Feline, Sovereign. Two, green, for a two, three, Creature, cat. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have protection from dogs. Whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Dogs beg, cats lay claim. I... Enjoy how the art on this one kind of insinuates that the cats are destroying artifacts by knocking them off of shelves. Regal Caracal. Three, white, white, for a three, three. Creature, cat. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. When Regal Caracal enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Oketra's closest viziers are known as her chosen, though others may have a better claim to that moniker. Tamiya, 
Kahira the Orphan Guard. 1. Hybrid Green White, Hybrid Green White. For a 2 2. Legendary Creature, Cat Beast. Companion. Each creature card in your starting deck is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast card. Vigilance. Each other creature you control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. So obviously not using the companion part of this card, but just using it to give the cats extra power and toughness and vigilance. Hungry Lynx. One green for a 2 2. Creature, cat. Cats you control have protection from rats. At the beginning of your end step, target opponent creates a 1 1 black rat creature token with death touch. Whenever a rat dies, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each cat you control. It's an okay political card for EDH, I think. The death touch makes it a little bit spicy, and your opponents may be reluctant to get the rats killed or sacrifice them, knowing that it's going to put permanent counters on all of your cats. And then our last cat is Pride Sovereign. Two green for a 2-2 two, two. creature cat. Pride Sovereign gets plus one plus one for each other cat you control. White, tap, exert Pride Sovereign. Create two one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. I'm a little on the fence about this card. I wanted it in here to continually generate the cat tokens, but I don't know. He can get pretty big if you have a lot of cats around, but having to tap him down for two turns is a little tough. So, we'll see. He may get replaced at some point. Alright, so our first non-cat creature is Sram Senior Edificer. One white for a 2-2 two, two. legendary creature, dwarf advisor. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw a card. As this conflict grows, it gets harder to prevent the city from breaking down. How much longer can we keep this machinery balanced? So he's here to draw cards for all of the equipment that we play. Relic Seeker. One white for a 2-2. Two, two. Creature, human soldier. Renown, one. When Relic Seeker becomes renowned, you may search your library for an equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So pretty much just an equipment tutor. Pure Steel Paladin. White, white, for a 2-2. Two, two. Creature. Human Knight. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Metalcraft. Equipment you control have equip zero as long as you control three or more artifacts. So, definitely a very powerful card and something your opponents want to keep in check here. Having equip cost zero really frees you up to move equipment around as much as you need before and after combat 
And yeah, it's just a very powerful effect for this deck to have. Alvar, God of Battle. Two, white, white, for a 4-4, four, four. legendary creature, God. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. Yeah, again, a card that lets you move around your equipment. This one, since it triggers each combat, means you could put an equipment on a creature to attack with it, and then on your opponent's combat steps, move it to a creature available for blocking, which would also give it double strike. This one is also an equipment. Sword of the Realms. One white for a legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creatures get plus two plus zero and have vigilance. Whenever equipped creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. Equip one white. It cuts through the cosmos itself, carving new omen paths between realms. So good card either way, but I think ideally you'd have the creature side. And it's our friend, Sakura Tribelder. One green for a 1-1 one, one creature snake shaman. Sacrifice Secure Tribe Builder. Search your library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. There were no tombstones in Orichi territory. Slain warriors were buried with a tree sapling, so they would become a part of the forest after death. And then our last creature, Nylia, God of the Hunt. Three green for a 6-6 six, six. legendary enchantment creature god. Indestructible. As long as your devotion to green is less than five, Nylia isn't a creature. Other creatures you control have trample. Three green. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, until end of turn. So that's it for the creatures. Next up, we're moving on to equipment. All right, so now we are on to artifacts. And we are starting with all of the equipment. Swift Foot Boots. Two for an artifact. Equipment. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste. Equip one. There is great wisdom in rushing headlong into combat if you are prepared. Kenjik, Captain of the Thousand Swords. Lightning Greaves. Two for an artifact. Equipment. Equipped creature has haste and shroud. Equip zero. After lightning struck the cliffs, the ore became iron, the iron became steel, and the steel became greaves. The lightning never left. So... 
this is a useful equipment to have, but unfortunately it does not work with Arabo um, because of the shroud ability. Grappling hook for for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has double strike. Whenever equipped creature attacks, you may have target creature block it this turn if able. Equip for part tool, part weapon, part of the core. Basilisk Collar 1. For an artifact Equipment Equipped creature has death touch and lifelink Equip 2. During their endless travels, the mages of the Goma Fada Caravan have learned ways to harness both life and death. Quietus Spike, 3, for an artifact, equipment, equipped creature has death touch. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. Equip 3. So this one's pretty good early, but if it's late game and life totals are pretty low, it can sometimes be worse than just dealing whatever the creature's power is. For instance, if someone's life total is 6, but you have a 4 power creature, then you would be better off just attacking with the creature than using this equipment. I believe it's also a replacement effect. So if it matters that the creature itself is dealing combat damage to the player, you wouldn't want to equip this to that creature, because now, with Quietus Spike, they are losing life rather than taking damage. So, just some caveats, but yeah, early in the game, this will take away huge chunks of life. Skull Clamp, one for an artifact. Equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, minus one. Whenever equipped creature dies, draw two cards. Equip one. The mind is a beautiful bounty encased in an annoying bone container. Shadow Spear. One for a legendary artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample and lifelink. One, permanence your opponent's control, lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Equip, two. A weapon of darkness for a warrior of light. Sword of the Animist. Two, for a legendary artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever equipped creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Equip two. The blade glows only for Zendikar's Chosen, so excellent card for thinning some lands out of your deck. Sword 
of vengeance. Three, for an artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste. Equip three. When wielded by a true believer, it matters little whether the sword is a relic or a replica. So, good for putting a bunch of keywords on a creature. Bloodforged Battle Axe. One, for an artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of Bloodforged Battle Axe. Equip two. Spilled blood always begets more of the same. So we saw Nazan earlier, and this is Hammer of Nazan. Four, for a legendary artifact, equipment. Whenever Hammer of Nazan, or another equipment, enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has indestructible. Equip 4. Another excellent way to get around paying for equip costs. Heart Seeker 4. For an artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus 2, plus 1, and has tap. Unattach Heart Seeker, destroy target creature. Equip 5. Behemoth Sledge 1. Green-White For an artifact Equipment Equipped creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and has lifelink and trample. Equip 3. Those who worship the great gargantuans could hardly be expected to fight with a subtle weapon. Sword of Hearth and Home 3. For an artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from green and white. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one target creature you own, then search your library for a basic land, put both cards onto the battlefield under your control, then shuffle. Equip two. So another one that you have to be careful with because the creature it's equipped to won't be able to use Arabo's Eminence trigger, but is a good way to repeat any enter the battlefield triggers from some of our creatures, like ones that will tutor up a land or equipment. Loxodon Warhammer 3. For an artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus 3, plus 0, and has trample and lifelink. Equip 3. A crafter must imbue her weapon with part of her soul, something the Phyrexians are incapable of doing. Malira, Silvic Outcast. Heirloom Blade. Three, four, an artifact, equipment. 
Equipped creature gets plus three, plus one. Whenever equipped creature dies, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Equip, one. Heroes, blade. Two, for an artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus two. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Hero's Blade to it. Equip, four. The best swords are forged with dragonfire. And our last equipment, Argentum Armor. Six for an artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus six, plus six. Whenever equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. Equip, six. Mirrodin's creator still lives, still shapes metal, and still commands world-shaking power. Just really big equipment here. Our first non-equipment artifact is Soul Ring. One for an artifact. Tap, add two colorless. Bow of Nylia. One green green for a legendary enchantment artifact. Attacking creatures you control have death touch. One green tap. Choose one. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Or Bow of Nylia deals two damage to target creature with flying. Or you gain three life, or put up to four target cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order. So, yeah, we have Death Touch and usually just putting plus one, plus one counters on the cats. Smuggler's Copter. Two for a three, three. Artifact, vehicle, flying. Whenever Smuggler's Copter attacks or blocks, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Crew, one. Not too hard to put a cat token in here and just let it go to town. And our last artifact is Essica's Chariot. Three green for a four four legendary artifact vehicle. When Essica's Chariot enters the battlefield, create two 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 green cat creature tokens. Whenever Essica's Chariot attacks, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. Crew four. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory here. So that was it for artifacts. Next up, we will go through the instants and sorceries. All right, so now we are on to the instants and sorceries. Cultivate. Two green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. 
Reveal those cards and put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle your library. All seeds share a common bond, calling to each other across infinity. Kodama's Reach Two green for a sorcery arcane. Search your library for two basic land cards, reveal those cards, and put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle your library. The land grows only where the kami will it. Dosen the falling leaf. Steel Shaper's Gift White Sorcery Search your library for an equipment card. Reveal that card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Some blades seek their own wielders. So, yeah, a good equipment tutor here. White Sun's Zenith. X, white, white, white. Instant. Create X, two, two, white cat creature tokens. Shuffle White Sun's Zenith into its owner's library. After the Battle of Leedfield, the White Sun crested above Taj Nar, bringing hope to all who survived the carnage. So yeah, just making a bunch of cat tokens. Weird Harvest X green green for a sorcery. Each player may search their library for up to X creature cards. Reveal those cards and put them into their hand. Then each player who searched their library this way shuffles it. Croce's distorted groves bear strange fruit. Swords to plowshares. White for an instant. Exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. The smallest seed of regret can bloom into redemption. Path to exile. White, instant, exile target creature. Its opponent may search their library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle their library. Divine Reckoning Two, white, white. Sorcery. Each player chooses a creature they control. Destroy the rest. Flashback. Five white white. So not quite a wrath, but good enough. Crushing vines. Two green for an instant. Choose one. Destroy target creature with flying. Destroy target artifact. Or Veil's curse won't stop me, Death Mage. I have taken down countless night hunters, and this dark plane is not big enough for you to hide. Garuk Wildspeaker to Liliana Vess. Alters light. Two white white for an instant. Remove target artifact or enchantment from the game. The altar does nothing. 
the device is crushed under the weight of its own impurity. Ushanti Leonin Seer Frozen grip, two, green, instant, split second, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Give up these unnatural weapons, these scrolls, heart and mind and a fist are enough. Zid, Kamalite Druid. Relic Crush, 4 Green, Instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, and up to one other target artifact or enchantment. There are many ruins, but there used to be many more. And our last spell for this group... Beast within, two green, instant, destroy target permanent, its controller puts a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Monsters dwell in every heart, we only think civilization tames them, Euphemia, Nexus Watcher. That's it for instants and sorceries, next up is enchantments. Our first one here is still a little bit more removal. We have Aura Shards. One green-white for an enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. Gaia forged her soldiers into self-wielding weapons that struck down all impurities. Marari's Wake. Three green white enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. The land drank power from the Marari as though it had thirsted forever. Zendikar Resurgent, 5 green green for an enchantment. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add 1 mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. So definitely triggers you don't want to forget here. <laughs> Not speaking from experience or anything. Alright, so that was it for enchantments. Next up, we have our only planeswalker in the deck. We have Garuk Primal Hunter. Two, green, green, green. For a 3 loyalty, Planeswalker, Garuk. Plus 1. Put a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Minus 3. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Minus 6. Put a 6-6 six, six green worm creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. So yeah, he does a lot. Sometimes he just comes in and draws a bunch of cards and leaves. Or sometimes you can get him to stick around. If he gets close to the ultimate, 
that's pretty much going to be game unless your table deals with it. And finally, we are on to the lands. We'll do the non-basic lands first. Vivid Meadow Land. Vivid Meadow enters the battlefield with two charge counters on it. Tap, add white to your mana pool. Tap, remove a charge counter from Vivid Meadow. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Ancient Den. Artifact Land. Tap, add white to your mana pool. Tajnar, Throne of Raksha's Golden Cub, destined leader of the Leonin Prides. So yeah, this just triggers things that care about artifacts. And same with this one. Tree of Tales, Artifact Land, Tap, Add Green to your Mana Pool, Tel Jalad, Sanctum of the Ancient Trolls, Keeper of the Secret of Mirrodin's Origin. Vivid Grove, Land, Vivid Grove enters the battlefield tapped with two charge counters on it. Tap, add green to your mana pool. Tap, remove a charge counter from Vivid Grove. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth. Legendary Land. Each land is a forest in addition to its other types. Multani's heart is a seed, and all of Yavamaya is its flower. There is as much life in here as the rest of Dominaria together. Karn. Mosswort Bridge. Land. Hideaway. Tap, add green to your mana pool. Green, tap. You may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if creatures you control have total power 10 or greater. Canopy, vista. Land, forest plains. Canopy Vista enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. The continent of Marasa lies beneath a blanket of dense vegetation, its enormous branches tangled so thickly that some inhabitants never see the ground. Sun Petal Grove Land, Sun Petal Grove enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest or a plains. Tap, add green or white to your mana pool. Temple Garden, Land, Forest Plains. As Temple Garden enters the battlefield, you may pay two life. If you don't, Temple Garden enters the battlefield tapped. In the gardens of the Conclave, order and beauty are the roots of power. Grasslands Land Grasslands enters the battlefield tapped. Tap Sacrifice Grasslands. Search your library for a forest or plains card and put it onto the battlefield 
then shuffle your library. Temple of Plenty Land Temple of Plenty enters the battlefield tapped. When Temple of Plenty enters the battlefield, scry 1. Tap, add green or white to your mana pool. Sungrass, Prairie, Land, 1, tap, add green, white to your mana pool. On Otaria, peace and harmony are rare. Places that provide both are cherished. Stirring Wildwood, Land, Stirring Wildwood enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add green or white to your mana pool. One, green white. Until end of turn, Stirring Wildwood becomes a 3 4 green and white elemental creature with reach. It's still a land. Crozen Verge Land Crozen Verge enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add a colorless to your mana pool. Two, tap, sacrifice Crozen Verge. Search your library for a forest card and a plains card and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Windswept Heath. Land. Tap. Pay one life. Sacrifice Windswept Heath. Search your library for a forest or plains card. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Command Tower. Land. Tap, add to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. When defeat is near and guidance is scarce, all eyes look in one direction. Path of Ancestry Land Path of Ancestry enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. When that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, scry one. Opal Palace Land Tap Add colorless to your mana pool. One, tap. Add to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. If you spend this mana to cast your commander, it enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. Rogue's Passage Land Tap Add colorless to your mana pool 4. Tap Target creature can't be blocked this turn Rumors quickly spread among thieves about a labyrinth without walls and a prize beyond all measures of worth Temple of the False God Land Tap Add two colorless to your mana pool Activate this ability only if you control five or more lands 
when gods become apathetic, the people will worship anyone who answers their pleas. Kiora. So that's it for non-basic land. Um, I'll just flip through the remaining basic lands quickly. And there we have it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm curious to know your thoughts on my version of this deck, and whether this is a commander that you play, or if you've played against it before. As you can see from this video and the others that I've posted so far, I'm really big on, like, themed creature decks, so... Let me know your thoughts or your experiences. I'd love to hear about it. If you have any questions for me, leave them in a comment below and I'd be happy to answer. And of course, please subscribe and come back every Monday and Friday for more Magic the Gathering ASMR videos. And as always, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.